episode two of The Pickup, Stab and Van's variety show on location here in Huntington Beach. I'm Corey Stevens, and I'm here with my host, Harry Bryant. Hey. And Dylan Graves. In today's episode, we'll visit Southern California's most explosive wave, the Wedge. After that, we'll head back to Huntington Beach to check out the Duct Tape Festival, check in with Ocean Stewards, OC Coast Keeper, conduct a pier shooting challenge, and we'll find out who are the first surfers in the water during the Vans US Open of Surfing. Speaking of the event, we'll also join Mikey C. in his bunker to discuss the more peculiar points of this year's competition. For this episode, we're on our way to the Huntington Beach International Surfing Museum. Let's get it on. Do you guys spend a lot of time in museums? I can't say I have spent too many, too much time in surf museum, but there's a lot of history in here. So there's all these boards for it ranging from the 1920s, and then there's a Kanoa Igarashi like Huntington Hop special that's so sunblasted, like it looks like it's from the 70s. <laughs> the hurricane swell we mentioned last episode has arrived, and a fickle Huntington adjacent surf spot has delivered waves that some surfers have described as pipeline s. So what's the best thing you guys have seen so far from this last swell? Yeah, we just kind of chased novelty waves through that swell event, really. I just said Frank as many times as I possibly could. <laughs> this will probably become a hurricane. Frank is a category one hurricane. Hurricane Frank. Cabrón me, Hurricane Frank. Definitely woke up and saw the swell and just yelled, Frank, <laughs> Frank, Frank, Frank. What? I actually saw something pretty sick. Uh, did you guys see Victor Bernardo and Mateus Hurdy's party wave? Just double air to high five? That's insane. High five at the end was the, that was the icing on the cake. Okay. Um, but you guys know that tandem surfing has always been the pinnacle of progression in surfing, you know, the one where they hold people in the air. Mm, hell yeah. But is synchronized surfing the future? I sure hope so. I like the diving. It's like the tandem diving and like the Olympics. Or the synchronized swimming with the legs. Yeah, like, that's kind of what was going down there yeah. with the airs. I can jam as many people on a, on a wave as possible. Screw toe-ins, like let's get some bro-ins. Bro <laughs> the swell, of course, also lit up Huntington Beach, and we've seen some incredible highlights in the event, but also some extremely hairy moments. Hawaiian surfer Kiala Tomoda Bannert and French surfer Tristan Gilbo both experienced intimate moments with the pilings of the famous pier. Oh, no. Oh! oh. <laughs> Damn! There's barnacles all over those um, pilings too, hey? Yeah, super sharp. Oh, here we go. Chris Kiala. Oh, no! Straight into it. No. Wait, what? That's probably the worst part. Yeah. First time trying to go through the pier. <laughs> It didn't really do it. Kiala Tomona Banner. I'm from Kauai. Tristan Gilbo from France. I was more scared about my board than myself. I tried to dodge it first and then I jumped on the side. I was like, oh, this is my magic board. I don't want it to break. Yeah, the response from the people, like even on top of the pier, were, were insane. Everyone else was probably more freaked out than I was. And then everybody was cheering on the beach. And that's the vibe of like the US Open that I was watching at home a couple years ago. And it's so insane to be here today, you know. Someone who wasn't able to narrowly escape carnage was Vans Waffle Cup contestant Trey Jones, who attempted something that almost seemed impossible, and apparently it was. That's basically the land version of hitting a piling. He got smoked, that guy. Is he all good? I think he's okay. I don't think anything serious is broken, but yeah, he's having to take a little breather for a minute. Damn. Yeah. Well, glad you're all good, Trey. Yeah. <laughs> Everything at the US Open feels big, but that was especially huge. The crowd went ballistic for that though. I was shaping in the like shaping tent. When that happened, the stadium like shook. Did you think you shaped like the best board ever? Everyone was like, right as I was just finishing up on the plane or everyone was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about the Duct Tape Festival and what you've been doing down there. Yeah, there's like a shaping booth set up down on the beach, carved out a little 46 inch trad boog that's getting glassed as we speak. Did you guys see Dakota Roach's shaping technique? I did. I actually spoke to him about it. He told me he used uh, he used a BMX like handlebar to like shape his nose. I think that's I don't know. It's just sick the ideas that people come up with to like you know 
you know, get inspired to shape a board. It's, it's pretty rad. I wrote a, yeah, a board that was made by like a BMX guy the other day. Like, it's just like, oh wait, that's, that's the, the same. Yeah. That's the same. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta just get up to date with everything. <laughs> But the board works, man. Yeah, and he... <laughs> the board, the board works on you, Dakota. What could we do different? You know, because part of it's like trying to be experimental, and it's like use handlebars for the nose template, and then like a wheel for the uh, tail template. All right, now it's time to check in with Mikey, who's in the bunker. He pickpocketed you last night. He did, yeah. He was picking on me for wearing a chain wallet, and then he was talking <laughs> to me about it. And then he goes, so does it work? And I'm like, yeah. And then my wallet was gone, and he'd completely stolen it from my, from my pocket without me looking. Cheeky little man. License, cash, lifetime membership to Supercuts? And what? Hello. What's this? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Nice little addition to my board. Thanks, Harry. Speaking of boards, did you see what happened to Kolohe's Poor Mayhem this week? And no, this isn't the doing of United, American, or even Spirit Airlines. After losing in round two of the Vans US Open, we saw glimpses of a younger, more hot-headed brother, which I actually enjoy. I just wish he'd focus this sort of passion more into CT events. Last episode, we discussed the number six surfers in the world, Kanoe Igarashi and Lakey Peterson, who were in the midst of an existential crisis. While they'd both love to win California's most iconic surf event, going deep in the draw at the Vans US Open means they'd have less time to prepare for the final CT event in Tahiti. Coincidentally, or not, both surfers lost in the second round this week, giving them ample time to arrive at Chopo and fight for their spot in the WSL Final Five. While Lakey and Kanoa might have had an incentive to lose this week, other surfers were giving it 6,000%. With the new swell filling in and a ripping current along with it, surfers were doing an average of 2.5 runarounds per heat. With one lap of the competition area measuring roughly 2,500 feet, surfers were covering over a mile in their heats between running, paddling, and surfing. Some competitors were so tired, they called it quits early. Joel Chianca said it was one of the hardest heats of his life. That was like one of the hardest like heats I ever surfed. And he lost to John John with an excellent heat total twice this year. William Cardoso was so winded that he literally retired. This be, will be my last year in the, in the Challenge Series. Unlike a typical US Open, which is won by connecting 13 windshield wiper turns in rapid succession, the new swell has turned the judging more towards single high-impact maneuvers. Caroline Marks and Molly Picklin both earned eights for these one-turn wonders, and Ryan Callanan somehow survived this atomic lip explosion to advance into the quarters. But the best maneuver of the comp belongs to Aton Osborne, who launched fearlessly to the flats and landed on a pile of marshmallows. The Stab Highway MVP is just three heats away from the biggest win of his life. Let's hope he doesn't choke. Help him! Help him! With the quarterfinalists decided, the men's and women's shortboard divisions will go on break tomorrow as the Vans Duct Tape Invitational takes over HB Pier. The event's gonna end on Sunday, so in the meantime, I guess I'm going to Supercuts.